Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to learn about the domain and the range. Imagine we had a function f of x equals x squared. We could draw a graph of y equals f of x. To do this we select some x values, some inputs and use the function to generate some y values, the outputs. Let's start with x equals 0, so 0 squared is also 0, so we get the point 0, 0. Then if we move on to x equals 1, we do 1 squared, which is 1. 2 squared gives you 4. 3 squared gives you 9. 4 squared gives you 16. And let's do the negative, so negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 3 squared is 9. And negative 4 squared is 16. So we end up with this nice quadratic curve. Now that we've graphed this function, we can talk about the domain and the range. The domain of a function is the set of inputs. You could think of it as the x values. For this graph, we had the x values from negative 4 to 4. But the domain of the function f of x equals x squared is actually all real values of x because you could put any number into this function. You could even put in 1 million or negative 47. All values of x would work, so the domain is all real values of x. What about the range? Well, the range is the corresponding set of outputs for the inputs that you've selected. So you could think of this as the y values. For this graph, you can see the y values here. Notice how it's not possible to get a negative number for this function. So negative numbers won't feature in the outputs, so they won't feature in the range. If we continue to plot more points for this graph, then you'll actually be able to get any positive number as an output. So all of the positive numbers will be in the range. Of course, zero is also in the range because that's one of the points on the y-axis there. So we'd say the range is all numbers that are greater than or equal to zero. Now when we come to write the range, we always write f of x because they're the outputs, so f of x is greater than or equal to zero. We've seen already that the domain for this function is all real values of x. Sometimes though we like to restrict the domain. Let's imagine we restricted the domain for this graph to x is in between 1 and 4. So we're only looking at the x values from 1 to 4, so we're only interested in this part of the graph. Now if this domain is restricted, it also has an effect on our range. So you can see the range of values, the outputs on the y-axis, now goes from 1 to 16. So the corresponding range is the outputs, f of x, are in between 1 and 16. Let's try a different domain. So now let's restrict it from negative 2 to 3. So we're interested in x values from negative 2 to 3. So we only want this part of the graph now. So we look at the corresponding y values for this part of the graph. You can see they go from 0 up to 9. So the range for this corresponding domain is f of x, the outputs, are in between 0 and 9. And we'll do one more. So this time we'll look at x in between negative 4 and negative 2. So let's highlight those on the x-axis. And we only want this section of the graph now. If we look at the y-axis, we can see the corresponding range. They go from 4 to 16. So f of x is in between 4 and 16. Notice how this time I use less than symbols in my answer for the range, rather than less than or equal to symbols. This is due to the restriction on the domain. The largest output here, which is 16, is obtained when you have the input x equals negative 4. But if you look at the domain carefully, you're not actually allowed negative 4, you're allowed any number up to negative 4. Since we can't use negative 4 in the domain, we can't input it into the function, so we can't get 16 out. So we can get any value up to 16. The same applies at the other end. The lowest value on the range here of 4 can't be obtained because you can't actually put in negative 2. So instead we use less than symbols. And one final domain from negative 3 to 3. So let's mark those on on the x-axis. And that means we're only interested in this part of the graph now. You can see the range from the graph. It's the values from 0 to 9. So the outputs, f of x, are in between 0 and 9. Now you have to be extremely careful on this question. So we had the domain which was negative 3 is less than x is less than 3. This one uses less than symbols rather than less than or equal to. So you may think that both of these need to be less than symbols, but that's not actually correct. You need to check very carefully which values can actually be obtained using the domain you've been given. So, how do we get 9 as an output? Well, we can get 9 in two ways when we substitute in 3 or negative 3. However, those values don't fall in the domain, they're just the endpoints of our domain. So we can't actually get the value 9 as an output, just anything up to 9. So we'll use a less than symbol. But how do we get the number 0? 
while zero as an output is when we use zero as an input. But zero does fall in between negative three and three. So we can actually achieve that bottom point at the bottom of the range there, so we use a less than or equal to symbol. It's really important when you have questions like this to check the endpoints, but also look at the graph to see what's actually happening. Sometimes you will include the endpoints of the range, but sometimes you won't. Let's have a look at a type of question that you may be given. We have a function f of x equals 3x plus 4, and we're given a domain, x is in between 5 and 12, and we need to work out the range of this function. To do this, we'll take the function 3x plus 4 and draw a sketch of y equals 3x plus 4. That would be a straight line graph, it has a positive gradient, and crosses the axis at plus 4, a positive value, so something like this. Now what we're going to do is imagine we substitute the endpoints of our domain into the function. So the lowest point of the domain here is 5, so we'll put 5 into the function 3x plus 4. So 3 dots of 5 plus 4, which gets you 19. Now we'll do the same with the other endpoint here, so 12. So 3 times 12 plus 4 equals 40. This means that if the input is 5, the output is 19. If the input is 12, the output is 40. Since this function has a restricted domain from 5 to 12, we're only interested in this section of the graph. You can clearly see the range goes between 19 and 40. So the range, remember it's f of x because they're the outputs, is in between 19 and 40. And notice this time that I've used less than symbols. This is because to get 19 as an output you need to input 5, and to get 40 as an output you need to input 12. But neither 5 nor 12 were actually included in the domain, they're just the endpoints, so we can't actually achieve 19 or 40, so they're not included in the range. Now we're going to stick with the same function but switch things around a bit. This time we've been given the range and we need to work out the domain. So we'll have our same sketch, and we have a range which is from 10 to 31. We can draw this range onto the diagram, so it's in between 10 and 31. We just need to work out the corresponding domain values which give us this range. So we need to find the input values that will give you an output of 10 and an output of 31. To do this we just write our function is equal to 10 and our function is equal to 31. This gives you two equations to solve. On the left one take away 4 from both sides you get 3x equals 6, which solves to give x equals 2. For the right one again take away 4, you end up with 3x equals 27, and this solves to give x equals 9. So when we input 2 we get 10 out, and when we input 9 we get 31 out. So the missing values on the graph in the domain are 2 and 9. So we were only interested in this section of the graph. The corresponding domain here then is x is in between 2 and 9. Notice this time I've used less than or equal to symbols. This is because the lowest output value 10 comes from an input value of 2. Since 10 is included in the range, to get this I need to include 2 in the domain. It's a similar story for 31, the highest output value, that comes from an input value of 9. Since 31 is included in the range, I need to include 9 in the domain to get it. Now we're going to look at a different function. This time it's f of x equals x squared minus 8x plus 15. We're going to restrict the domain from 1 to 6 and try and work out the range of the function. We're going to start in the same way as we did before, so we'll substitute in the endpoints. Let's start with 1. We get 1 squared, take away 8 lots of 1 plus 15, which is 8, and then we'll also substitute in 6. 6 squared, take away 8 lots of 6 plus 15, gives you 3. We can now draw a graph of this, so if we input 1, we get 8 as an output, so there's a point here. And if we input 6, we get 3 as an output, so there's a point here. You'd be forgiven now for thinking that we found the range, you'd probably think it was in between 3 and 8. Unfortunately, there's a big assumption here. If we do say this, then we've assumed that the point 1, 8 connects up to the point 6, 3 in quite a nice way. It doesn't go outside of that range. It could just be a straight line like this. Unfortunately, that's not the case with this function though. This function's a quadratic graph, so it would make a nice U shape. It would actually look something like this. So when finding the range, we can't just substitute in the endpoints of the domain and hope that's going to give us the endpoints of our range. We have to be careful and consider what the graph actually looks like. 
So the section of the graph we're interested in is the domain from 1 to 6, so this part of the graph here. You can see the highest value in the range is indeed 8, but the lowest value isn't 3, the graph actually dips well below that. So we need to find the lowest point on the graph here. Since this is a quadratic function, we can complete the square to find this point. So if we take this function here and rewrite it in the completed square form, it's x minus 4 all squared minus 1. This means the coordinates of the vertex down at the bottom are 4, negative 1. So the lowest value in the output is actually negative 1. So we can correct the range. It now goes from negative 1 up to 8. We aren't, however, finished with this question yet. There's one more thing to do. To get a value of 8 in our outputs, we would input 1. However, our domain is from 1 to 6, but doesn't include 1 or 6, so you can't actually input the value 1, so you can't get the output value 8. That's why we use the less than sign here to indicate that 8 isn't in the range, it's anything up to the value of 8. However, the value of negative 1 can be achieved. If you input 4, you get negative 1 out, but 4 is within the domain so we need to change the lower part of this inequality to a less than or equal to sign. Sometimes you may be given a question like this. We have a function, and we need to explain why a certain domain is not suitable. In this case, x is less than 20. To do this, you want to try some values that are less than 20 and find one where it doesn't work. So for instance, if we made x 1, we would have 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 5, which gives you 2 over 6, which is an acceptable output. But what about if we chose x to be negative 5? Negative 5 plus 1 over negative 5 plus 5 gives you negative 4 over 0. Now you can't divide a number by 0, so this function isn't defined at the point when x equals negative 5. Therefore, x being less than 20 is not a suitable domain. We could answer the question by saying the function is not defined at x equals negative 5. Now we'll try this function, we have g of x equals the square root of x minus 7, and we need to explain why x is greater than 1 is not a suitable domain. So again, we'll try some values that are greater than 1 and see what happens. Let's make x 9, we get square root of 9 take away 7, which is the square root of 2. That's an acceptable output. What about if we made x 4? We'd have the square root of 4 take away 7, which is the square root of negative 3. Now you can't square root a negative number, so this one doesn't work. So we could say the function is not defined at x equals 4. But you could even extend this to say the function is not defined when x is less than 7. Since if x is less than 7, we end up with a negative number in the square root, therefore it's not defined. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the video I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and remember there are exam questions in this video's description.